Hey, everybody, you are watching and listening to the We Are Rising podcast. This is your host, Andrew Benjamin. I'm joined by a very special guest today. We have our very first ever Quintet Grappler on our show. With us, we have Kazuko Sakamoto, who will be part of Team Fairtex, along with Yoshida Ryoko, Juliana Laurentino, Carolina De Amarim, hey. Kuharihara, and Kanan Kishida. Uh, uh, Kazuko, I really appreciate your time talking to us, uh, especially because you got babysitting duties as well. Thank you for finding time. I really appreciate you talking to us. <laughs> no, thank you for inviting me on your podcast. Thank you. I'm excited. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, who are you? How did you get into this this sport of grappling? Got it. Um, well, so my name is Kazuko Sakamoto. Um, I started uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu at the uh, Henzo at the, one of the Henzo, um, Henzo fighting, ah, man, totally lost it, but the, at the, one of the Henzo dojos in Brooklyn um, in uh, 2016. And I was there for two years. Um, and then uh, one thing led to another and I moved back to Tokyo and I joined Imanari Jiu uh, And there I started, you know, doing grappling um, because prior to that, it was mostly gi. Um, and uh, I guess initially I started doing jujitsu because my husband, he started training there as well. So I figured why not? And um, yeah, so I've been doing grappling since then in Japan with, well, for three years now. Um, and it's been fun. It's actually, uh, I prefer it better than Gi. Yeah. It's funny because so I'm I'm from New York City myself. I live in Brooklyn. Was this the uh, <laughs> uh, Henzo Gracies in Williamsburg or Park Slope? Because because everybody knows uh, Williamsburg. One, that was it. Okay, I know that one. But everybody, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody knows the one in Manhattan. You know the big one of like three fours, whatever. But yeah, you're. I think you're the first person yeah, I've ever yeah, met yeah. who's from, who's trained at the uh, Brooklyn at the Williamsburg one. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's exactly the place that I started. Yeah. So how did you, uh, so how did you wind up uh, with, uh, for those, um, Imanari, that's Mazakasu Imanari, the famous inventor of yep. the Imanari role. How, how did you uh, get yes. into uh, his uh, dojo? Well, so when I moved back here, I was looking into where, where to, um, you know, practice my jujitsu. I uh, went to Carpe Diem. Uh, I went to Triforce, you know, the big name uh, jujitsu places in Tokyo. And um, obviously the name Imanari, you know, Masakazu, he's big. And, you know, uh, I wasn't too, um, I didn't, I wasn't too familiar with leg locks. So I figured maybe try something new because Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is usually more about, you know, passing guard, keeping control, um, you know, so I figured I mean, I went to all the dojos and I think Imanari Jiu-Jitsu um, had, a, had a chill vibe and, you know, I decided, okay, let me try it out. And, and I have enjoyed it since then. Yeah. So you made a very interest, interesting point. Uh, Gracie, you know, that's a traditional Jiu-Jitsu where you start in the Gi first, then you work your way to no Gi or, or, or even, well, I used to train at Matt Serra's, who is a... Uh, Black belt mm -hmm, under mm -hmm. Henzo Gracie, so I know the whole deal, you know, gi before anything else. But uh, you just uh, you mentioned that uh, Imanari. It sounds like you said it's a no gi school, kind of mm -hmm. like a, okay. Well, yes. what, what do you what what do you prefer? Do you prefer no gi gi? Is there something? Uh, do you enjoy both in their own unique way? To, uh, yeah, I want to hear that. I do enjoy both, but right now no gi is definitely my thing. Um, Gi is fun, but I feel like uh, there's some limitations to movement because obviously, you know, people grab, you know, your gi and it's just, uh, um, but no gi, I feel like the movement, I mean, I get to move a lot more uh, freely, you know, it's more dynamic um, and, I, and I enjoy that. Um, so, do you ever see yourself uh, competing professionally ever in a in a gi again, or are you just gonna be professionally uh, competing in in no gi for your future? What do you think? I think I'll stick with the no gi. 
um, just because I really enjoy it. Um, and you know, leg locking. I, I know I've I heard something about how IBJJF is gonna allow leg locks for brown belts from yeah for brown belts and over. Um, but you know, I, I I enjoy grappling right now, no gi, so I think I'm gonna stick with that. I was actually about that. That was gonna be one of my other questions that you brought up. I'll just ask right now. Yeah, the IB, IBJJF has a. Uh, they now are going to allow. I think leg locks. I think both in no gi and gi, if I'm correct. I think it used to be mm-hmm. there used to be mm-hmm. none, but I think but now they're actually allow it in uh, in both. Uh, yeah. you, from from a school that you know Imanari, you know, famous for heel hooks, leg locks, ankle holes, all all that stuff. What do you think about that? That the IBG I that that organization is now finally. I don't want to say mm, getting with the times, but in a way they kind of are. Uh, what, uh, how does that make you feel? Is that is is it kind of like well, it's about it's about time that you that you did that. I think it's interesting. I never really thought, you know, why not? Like I didn't I, I didn't really care too much that the you know IBJJF wasn't allowing leg locks because as it is, it was you know it's it's a it's a great comp you know. A great agency that that provides fun you know um jujitsu for people to view and um it, it was great as as it was and it'd be a lot more interesting now that they're gonna you know add the leg locks um i personally feel like with the gi you know there might be a lot of uh injuries <laughs> because you know with clothes I guess it, it gets, I don't know, the entanglement with the clothes and the, the foot and, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of legs being uh, broken and whatnot. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll yeah. see. We'll see, you know, when yeah, we'll the see. next big uh, tournament happens, you know, maybe they'll walk back on it. Maybe like, uh, let's, 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 let's walk back on that because everybody's walking out on crutches or something. Um, <laughs> so let's uh, talk about the quintet show coming up. Uh, you'll be part of the, of the tournament portion along with uh, four other uh, uh, women grapplers, as we mentioned before. So how, does, how, do, you, how do you train and prepare for this? Because you're going to be facing two other teams, Team Coro mm-hmm. and um, I apologize, I'm fearing again the other team right now. Um, Harper talk- Diem? I should, they're the ones mm-hmm. who are always on there. I should remember that. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so how do you like, and you also, you know, you may, some people wind up competing for the entire thing. Some may get eliminated, you know, the first thing, how do you prepare for that with, for yourself and your teammates? Yeah. So what's in- interesting is that they, they tell us to figure out the order of who goes first and who goes next or whatever the day of. So the, the day of, uh, um, they pick out which team goes against which team first and then that's the moment where we're like okay so you go first you know I'll go second um, and we haven't had much practice together we've been practicing each individually in our own dojos and you know we had one group practice um, where we just rolled with each other uh, but we didn't really talk about strategies you know they told us that we'll just have to figure it out the day of who go first. Um, and then also talk about whether, you know, um, strategize then, like, let's say if we know that the first opponent would be a heavy set girl, you know, we got to decide amongst ourselves, okay, who, who would be, who would most likely, you know, be able to submit this individual at that weight. And uh, they had all, also told us that, um, uh, if we roll with someone who's a lot heavier than us, we can decide to uh, have the um, the match be condensed to four minutes. If it's if we're you know similar in weight, it's going to be eight minutes. Please correct me if I'm I'm wrong, but I was looking at the weights mm-hmm. of all the competitors. Are you the lightest or the second lightest amongst your team? Second lightest. How is it? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, that's are you, 49 kilograms if i remember correctly um so uh, do you do you feel do you feel that having that uh, that being that light would be an advantage for something like this or is it, do you feel like there's could be disadvantages and maybe do you want to put on some weight i don't know a week uh, you mm-hmm. have like about a week uh, is there any chance mm-hmm. to put on some weight mm-hmm. if you feel like you want to do that yeah can you just mm-hmm. talk about that well 
Uh, as for um, increasing my weight, we actually, as a team, we have to be under 280 kilograms. So at this point, yeah, they told me to keep it at 49. Um, and uh, let's see. Can you hold on one second? Sorry. Um, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. Can you repeat that question again? Oh, no problem. No problem. So, yeah, like uh, for a former like this, you know, where you did mention about the, you know, if someone's uh, he heavier than you, I think it's over a certain amount. Oh, right, right, right. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Uh, do you feel that coming in uh, the way that you are at 49 kilograms, if you think that'll be an advantage, especially for something like this, for, you know, a high stakes, high, a uh, very high mm -hmm. intensity mm -hmm. uh, yes. grappling tournament like this? Yes. Yeah. Well, I think, um, I mean, I train with heavier set people all the time. So um, I'm confident that I, I'll be all right with the um, bigger girls. Um, but I do have a concern with the the, the team um, that's made up with the MMA, MMA girls. You know, they, they can be, the pressure, the pressure could be pretty intense. You know, if they get on top of me, uh, you know, it might be hard to get out, but the rules of quintet makes it so that if someone controls you, um, they have to move, they have to transition within, you know, three seconds, two seconds, or else they stop the, you know, they stop it and then they uh, give the person who was being controlled uh, an advantageous uh, position. Um, and then they start again. They want, they want movement, you know, they want people to be rolling like fast, no stalling. That's the one thing I've always been, I don't know whether to say it's a good thing or a bad thing is like, is the almost demand of action every second. Cause I've watched all, all I've seen almost all the other quintets and there, there, I, and I specifically remember this with the, uh, quintet, the other, uh, all women's, uh, tournament show where, mm -hmm. uh, like someone, I'm trying to remember who it was, but I remember there was one person who was, who like was on top and was was laying down but and you know they weren't doing anything in the advanced position but they were trying it looked like they're trying to think and the referee said action once and they said action i think maybe one more time and then said stop and then did the whole thing what do you think about that that, that mm -hmm. literally if there's no time to think you have to kind of be on you have to be doing something even for me even yeah. be disadvantageous uh because i know you've done tournaments before you've done the zest uh the zest battle hazards you've competed mm -hmm. in asia and the asia pacific uh tournaments as well we you know they don't do it unless you're deliberately stalling for those things that you can like compose your thoughts you can think okay you know i'm gonna just i'm gonna stay here for a few seconds and move on this but with quintet there's really nothing maybe you have like mm -hmm. 0.5 seconds to think of what to do maybe mm -hmm. even less what do you think about that mm -hmm. well i think i think that's what i uh think grappling is you know it's like fast movements just transition from one you know one transition to another uh so i don't mind it i i, I rather that than uh because I know with gi, I remember, you know, when I competed, it's like once you get into a, in, in a position where they're controlling you, you know, and you, you can't really do much unless you, you're able to escape and then transition into a different move. And um, so I think it's, yeah, I don't mind it. I mean, it, it definitely is going to take a toll on my uh, energy level because you have to be on uh, for the whole eight minutes. But uh I think it's all right. Yeah. Uh, now, I also I'm not too familiar with your team that much, um, uh, but I do know for a fact you do have, like I mentioned before, you do have tournament experience with Zest and the Age Pacific. Do you, um, how, what what would you say? Uh, are you I know have you, have you seen watch Quintet? I'm, I'm assuming you've seen mm -hmm. Quintet before, right? So, like, mm -hmm. what what would you say is the main big difference between all the t the tournaments that you competed in from what you've seen from Quintet? What do you see as like the big difference, positive? negative neutral no well, i guess the fact that you can uh, compete as a as a team i think that's that's cool usually the competitions or tournaments that i know of it's just you know one-on-one -on -one. this one involves a team of five girls going against another team and you know it, the the it'll be interesting because it's like who knows maybe cuddle 
goes first and then she ends up beating all of them in, in, in the other team, you know? Um, different things can happen in this uh, quintet. That'd be the easiest so payday. That'd be easiest payday. <laughs> Caroline yeah. or or Laurentino, they all just, you know, or maybe you go through everybody. Are, are, you yeah, prepared for, are you prepared for that possibility that you may just like wind up being the one person who competes for like- Well, yeah, I'm preparing for that, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping the, the knowledge I have of uh, leg locks supersedes most of them just because I, you know, I belong to Iman Jiu Jitsu, you know, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm thinking I have a, yeah. Now, the other thing I'm, I'm also curious to know, and I, I, I'm not so sure if this is correct, but you can let me know. Uh, Canon Kashida, did you take her on a tournament, I believe? I think, didn't you too? No, not Canon. Yeah, no, none of them. I actually never had an opportunity to uh, roll with any of them. Oh, okay, because yeah. I, I, I saw I thought I saw a video on YouTube where you taking somebody named Kashida, the same, spelled the same way, and I thought, oh, maybe it was the same person. Um... Maybe the, the girl that I wrote, yeah, I had a, a match with Megumi Kushida, maybe? Same last name, maybe? Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Because I'm about to say, like, is, that's interesting. That would be interesting if you two competed before and now you're on the same team. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. never mind. I'll scratch that question off. Mm -hmm. um, so, but, uh, so what do you want to do in your grappling career? You're already competing in Quintet. That's already a big plus. Do you have any other aspirations of competing? I don't know, uh, ADCC or Pan American, Pan Ams or something. Mm -hmm. Is there anything mm -hmm. that you want to else that you want to accomplish? Well, now that IBJJF will allow leg locks, I'd probably like to try the Nogi, you know, uh, compete in their Nogi. Uh, tournaments and see how I do. Um, also, it seems like all advanced grapplers have like their move. I'm curious to know, do you have a uh, a finishing move, so to speak? Well, <laughs> heel hooks, but I, I won't be able to use them in quintet. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, but um, you know, there is a, a straight ankle lock version. Well, it's called the Kazuka lock. Um, is that, did you, is that, just curious to know, that's, is that's not, is that named after you or is that named after? Yes. Oh, it is. Okay. Named after me. Yeah. Okay. It was a, we, you know, in class we'd, we'd like just try different things. And sometimes people come up with different, uh, versions of straight ankle logs or heel hooks. And then, then just happened that, you know, I was trying something and then it looked like it worked. And then the sensei. Uh, Imaya Sen said, you know, said that we should use that and name it after you. So it's it's a variation of a straight ankle lock. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. It was, well, because the only thing I know it is a straight ankle lock where you just put where you put the thing under there and do mm -hmm. that. How is yours different? Like um, so the position of your legs. So you know, it's a, a regular straight ankle lock. You have your feet like in a ashigarami position, like um, it's hard. I don't know. It's hard to explain, but basically, it's just the position of the legs. I have it so that uh, a leg is right behind the knee of the opponent, opponent, and then I'm pulling, and then I um, have the other leg over the opponent's knee. So a foot under their knee. It, 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 my is it kind of like a knee reap? Sounds like almost like a knee reap almost. Is it kind? It could be, yeah. Um, because from the way you almost made it sound, like, I thought you were just like, oh, so that sounds like a leg triangle. But then when you said that it's over the knee, that's like I could be. If you said over the knee, that could be a tri almost sounds like a triangle, but I don't think it is. It doesn't sound like a triangle, but it sounds like more like a knee reap, almost. It's basically like a. Um, I am kind of um, what's the word? Controlling the knee with you know, uh, both legs and then doing this, you know, having the, the leg right, I mean, the foot in a straight ankle. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So what is, uh, I'm curious, uh, what is it like rolling, learning, training with uh, Imanari-san? It's, uh, it's great. I mean, every time I roll with him, <laughs> uh, I get tapped left and right. Um, so I learn a lot, you know, um, and he's very creative 
And so I get to learn different types of submissions, not just, you know, um, the different variations of heel hooks, the straight ankle locks, you know, um, uh, different variations of like toe holds. Uh, and yeah, so it's, it's, it's fun, it's fun. How about, have you mastered the Imanari role? Uh, I wouldn't say master. I mean, I, I can definitely get it. However, you know, with the Imanari role, I do, uh, you know, it's a heel hook, right? You end up with a heel hook. Uh, but in quintet, I won't be able to do a heel. So maybe you could um, do what, uh, maybe you could do what Hideo Tokuro did and just uh, transition to an arm bar somehow. I could, yeah. Yeah, yeah, could do that. That was that was a beautiful move. Mm, I still I've watched that 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 submission maybe close to ten times, and I still have no idea how he pulled it off. I've done the whole, I've I've really like have like done like a uh, uh, like st st uh, every, every second frame. I still have no idea mm -hmm. how he was able to pull that it was off. Fast, but, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I, you, you said that heel hooks are not allowed, but straight ankle locks are like or knee knee bars and knee bars are. And actually, heel hooks aren't allowed, but uh, they do allow a variation of the heel hook, which is uh, instead of you know clutching it with your um, with your arm, you can use your hands and twist. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so that's that, that sounds basically like a toe hold. Is that is that toe hold more, or is it, or does that, that yeah, actually count as a? It's uh, not a toe hold. It's 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 a it's a it's a heel hook, but um without clutching it with your so there's this you know i mean this is the stuff leg locks it's it's a whole nother world you know like mm -hmm. before when i was at the henzo i never knew you could do these different things using your hands it's uh it's not just toe holds that you can actually you know um that you can do with your hands you grab mm -hmm. the foot and there's like ways you can twist it that isn't like a toe hold that imitates a heel hook um mm -hmm. so you can do that mm -hmm. do you think it, do you think it's it's it's, it's great now that that jujitsu grappling uh tournaments uh big and small are finding allowing uh uh stuff with all the leg uh like all, all these leg locks and all that stuff? Do, you think, do you think that's positive for jujitsu yeah i think so i mean i mean you look at the top top uh, grapplers out there, jujitsu grapplers. I mean, they're definitely uh, uh, leg lock literate, right? They they know a lot about leg locks, and I think to be one of those um, uh, renowned grapplers, you need to be versed in leg locks and everything else. So I think it's great that the you know the leg locks are coming coming in. And besides uh, Imanari san are there any other grapplers that you that you love to watch, learn from, take after? Uh, Gary Tonin, definitely his uh, the movements. You know, it's just very dynamic. It's always like just doing cartwheels and rolling, and just it's uh, it's a fun to watch. In general, are you a fan of the Danaher Death Squad? Mm, I wouldn't or say or fan. Or just Gary Tonin. Mm, well, I mean, I wouldn't say a fan, but definitely I feel like I learn a lot just watching their, uh, uh, you know, not watching them compete. Uh, yeah. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Uh, yeah. they're, they're very controversial. Some people like their antics. Some yeah, yeah. don't. And some can't appreciate what they do uh in the sport so that's that's a fair mm -hmm. answer that's a fair answer um so you, let's say yeah let's just say you you're, you you and your team win um is there anything next in terms of grappling that's that's coming up or that you ha have planned or anything of that sort well if um you know if they do have open up a nogi uh asian tournament the ibjjf opens up a nogi tournament here in, in japan then I'd like to take on that. Hmm. What about, uh, uh, would you ever, uh, if Quintet ever wanted to offer you a super fight against somebody, would mm -hmm. you also open to that as well? Definitely, yes. Is, yes, there, yes. 
Is there anybody in Japan that you'd be interested in facing? I'm not too familiar with the with the entire grappling scene in Japan, but is there anybody who is like, I don't know, that you want to test your skills against? Um, well, there is an individual who had who I went with, uh, I went against at Zest, Sugiuchi san. She I'd like to go against her again. And she's actually known to be one of the best female grapplers in Japan right now. Um, ever since, uh, what was her name? Rikako? Um, Iwasa, uh, Rikako the one who's, Iwasa, yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, she's, she's top, top. Like, I, I would like to go against her, but she's been a little am i i think mia right now just not in the not training at all i think I, it's just uh, she's the one who's like when she competed at quintet wasn't she like 17 or 18 she was like a teenager i think right wasn't she the really really no young? she she went against um the 10th planet uh oh um gundrum uh, Grace, uh, yes, Grace. Yes, yes, she, yes. She was 17 or something. That's her, that's her, that's her, that's her I'm thinking of. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, and Ikako went against her, and uh, that was a uh, very interesting. Uh, I think I know, I, I think I remember. Well, I think uh, then Rikako, uh, she tapped out uh, Sarah McMahon, if I remember correctly. Sarah McMahon like went through two or three people, and I think it was Rikaku who was the one who who wound up tapping her I don't out. Remember. I, I think I have to rewatch that. But, show. I mean, Rikako is she, she's amazing, she's an amazing grappler. And, mm -hmm. It'd be nice to have an opportunity to, you know, go against her, but not sure she's around. Mm. Um, but anyway, Sugiuchi san is she's one of the top top grapplers, and I'd like to go against her again. Mm -hmm. Now I'm curious to know as well. Um, I'm not going to mention your age because I I don't I feel uncomfortable doing that. With women, so if you want, anybody wants to look up your <laughs> don't age, I don't mind. Yeah, uh, I don't I, I don't have it. Thirty nine, right? Yes, yes. Thir you're thirty nine years old. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people like to say that, or I feel like grappling is is being definitely dominated by a lot more younger people. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think you're the. I think you might be the oldest on your team, if I'm correct. Yes. Um, yes. What do you? Uh, how do you think that uh, when it comes to age and grappling, do you think it's different than uh, affecting you than like say like an MMA or football mm -hmm. or boxing? Do you think that the age is a is as much of a negative factor as it is in other sports? Mm, I would say age isn't the negative factor, but I guess the how the body, <laughs> how you condition, keep your body conditioned, uh, you know, definitely plays a part on how well you can grapple at an age like mine. Um, because definitely I, I feel like uh, I'm, hurting a lot more than before when I was younger I feel like it my body doesn't heal as fast as before as it used to so um but then again I, there's a lot of uh, athletes who are still competing professionally you know even after like similar to my age and um I think they're still being able to perform well because they they condition well they're you know i mean they 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 they're healthy they uh train well they train smartly so um so maybe an issue for a lot of people they may think that it's an issue for a lot you know to be old in in, in this like grappling world but i think if you train well and you're smart about it then yeah i think you'll We'll find more older people grappling, definitely, in the future. Do you train differently than when you, uh, I don't know, say, five years ago or something? Do you, is there any... Yes. Is it, is it, is it the old adage, training, was it not tra training, not training less, but training smarter? Or is mm -hmm. it, well, what's your, uh, what's your training now versus how it used to be? Um, definitely more self-care. <laughs> like, uh, you know, massaging, you know, the muscles, like uh, getting um, treatments done in, you know, acupuncture or uh, sports medicine and um, um, just being more cognizant about, you know, healing well, um, not just letting it heal naturally, but doing stuff actively healing. Uh, doing the, are you do, 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 do the, um, oh my God, 
cupping. Do you do the cupping as well? Does that? Uh... No, actually, I've never done that. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's very popular. Mm -hmm. I um, I know. I like remember uh, when the Olympics were. I think it was in Tokyo a few years ago. Like all the athletes had like all the cupping things on their back, and that's how I discovered. Mm. Oh, that apparently that's a thing. And then I know some people at my uh, jujitsu school do that as well. They do the cupping, acupuncture, and all that stuff. Okay, um, is it uh, it and so like, do you know? How long do you expect to like? Do you expect that you're gonna train and professionally mm -hmm. being grappling? Do you have a set time for for this, or is it just mm -hmm. gonna, you're gonna continue on until you get bored of it? Or I don't know. How long do you much? How, how long do you see yourself in this? Mm. Um, as far as I can go, I guess. <laughs> uh, but I mean, I, professionally, I never really uh, thought that I'd do this like in this capacity, like, you know, in competing in such a big uh, tournament uh, competition, quintet, uh, it just kind of naturally happened. So I never really thought about, you know, doing this like in the long run. So I just like to keep it the way it has been. I'm just gonna keep training and if the opportunity arises, I'll, I'll compete and, uh, and you know, I'll, I'll, I'll train forever, basically. Um, um, and if things happen and I get to compete along the way, then I'll do it. That's uh, all. Yeah. Like I said, you did the Zest tournament, which I think was that was last year, November or October, I believe. Was yes, it? yes, yes, around then. So, yeah, you had that. Now you have Quintet. So it seems like things are coming in now at this time mm -hmm. in your life. And mm -hmm. uh, it do you, do you think that stuff like this, that like these big time opportunities would, would ever come to you in this sport at all? Did you ever think that was, mm. it would ever happen? No, no. There was one time that they had the ADCC trials here. And uh, I thought about, you know, taking part, but uh, due to scheduling, it never, it didn't happen. And so, I mean, it was, I did think about it. I did think about, you know, competing in, in a in a big tournament like that uh but never really uh you know happened mm -hmm. until uh, this year and last year yeah and we you we usually ask all the athletes uh this question whenever we have um mma fighters anybody what have you what's the worst injury you've ever gotten uh in grappling professionally or training if there's ever been one well actually um quite recently when uh, all of us got together to train, we trained at a different dojo at Triforce. And uh, we rolled with the people who were training at that, the, the members of Triforce. And there was one individual, she was, I think a MMA, a professional MMA athlete. And uh, she asked me to roll with her and uh, she got me on a straight ankle. I didn't expect her to, to do leg locks on me. And so, she uh, got me on a straight ankle lock and then it, all I heard was like eggshells, like cracking <laughs> when she got my ankle, uh, straight ankle. Uh, and so I've, that, that was a big injury <laughs> for me in the history of all, the, of all of grappling that I've done. Um, it's not bad now. I've, I've been, uh, it's healing well. And, uh, you know, I've been training. It's been fine. But that that was definitely one of the bigger injuries that I've had. Um, I was about to say, usually when you hear, when you hear something cracking, when uh, when, when my injury happened, uh, it sounded like uh, someone took dry spaghetti and uh, did that when I broke my leg. Uh, so like, mm -hmm. whenever you hear that sound, usually it's not good, but I'm glad to hear that in your case, it wasn't a serious injury. Cause when you hear those cracks, that's usually not a good sign. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so you said your, you said your husband also trains in grappling. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. you ever get, do, when you get into arguments, do you, do you, does he just, do one of you just bring out a timer and say, okay, you know what? We're just going to sell this in a five minute match. Whoever wins, wins the argument. Whoever taps out the other person. Uh, yeah, that, I guess so. Kind of. I mean, sometimes we just like put ourselves in like different lock, you know, submission positions and just like uh, start rolling. Um, we have we have a mat in our room, so we definitely uh, have many opportunities to roll and just do, you know, grapple and uh, definitely sort out our differences on the mat. 
<laughs> okay, good, good. Uh, I'm also curious to know for the for, for the team. Do you do you bring? Uh, is are you gonna have like Imanari or your husband, or or is it just your team that's gonna be um, seconding you? I guess. Are you allowed to bring? Actually, in- uh, yeah, my husband is coming. He's gonna be sec. Yeah, he's gonna be the second. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Do you call I- it the second thing? What do you call them? I have I, the I, person I, on the side. I don't. I I would assume it's called seconding, but if you're with four mm-hmm. of the people, it wouldn't technically be a. S- second I don't, know, I don't know what the, i don't know but I'll, I'll call it the unofficial second i guess maybe mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. um so I, well, i'm also curious to know so i know you're you're bilingual you speak japanese and english uh do mm-hmm. you uh whenever you have a second do you prefer to hear english or japanese or is there can you just can you just d- listen to both like easily and like and you can just know what to do well what happens is that um, with my husband, we, we talk, we use both. I mix both Japanese and English. And uh, I also speak Spanish. Uh, oh. So with uh, certain people, I speak Spanish with my mom. And uh, so it's, it's, yeah, I interchange languages often. You see that, could that be an advantage you think in, in something like this? Because I'm assuming that the other teams, either English, I'm going to guess certainly Spanish, uh, but English probably is not at, is not fluent at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, think- that would be an advantage. Yeah. And uh, uh, my husband definitely, he, he knows my strengths and my weaknesses and he's, 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 he's knowledgeable with like, you know, uh, the advice he gives on the mat, like he, he'll, and I and I can register his voice really easily, so it's gonna be it's it's gonna be good. Yeah, yeah, having him there telling me what to do and you know what not to do or watch for the leg, watch for whatever. And yeah. Uh, do you have any pre-match routines whenever you have a big grappling match? Uh, I don't know if for for the, for Zest or the Asia Pacific tournaments. Do you have like a uh, do you say a prayer? Do you just walk around the room, mm-hmm. listen listen to Celine Dion? I don't know. Do you have any pre uh, pre-match routines? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Not really, yeah. Just uh, try to keep the anxiety down by just not thinking about the what's to come. <laughs> do, you, do you still get anxious before, like right before, like oh, yeah. before step, step up the mat, to the mat? Yes, definitely. Oh, okay. the you, nerves. Is it, it, it? It's that's always interest. I've always found that so interesting. That, that there are people that are professional athletes who can be doing this for like 20, 30 years, any sport. And they still say, yeah, as soon as I'm supposed to go on the basketball court or I'm supposed to go on the field, get locked in the cage, they say they still get nervous. But yet, like, as soon as the bell rings or the whistle, the gong goes off, it completely goes away. Does that happen with you? Uh, as soon as the referee Actually, says Actually, yeah, that's kind of like how it is. Like, nervous all the way up to where you're, you know, you step onto the mat. And then it's like, just the nerves, just, it doesn't register, I guess, because the adrenaline and, and everything else kicks in. So you're just like, okay, competing time. <laughs> now, uh, what do you, ho- um, one of my last questions will be, what did you hope to, what is, with this quintet thing, what do you hope that overall that this, that this is, that you hope to accomplish with this? Obviously you want to win, you want your team to win, but is there any other inner, or metaphysical mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. Uh, type of goal that that you hope that this that this mm-hmm. that comes about because of this um yeah i uh, i think i want to take this opportunity to get to know the other women grapplers because uh there's not too many uh here in tokyo and uh actually like most of the girls well three of the girls in my team they live f- kind of far from tokyo so um you know definitely take this opportunity to link up with female grapplers and you know kind of increase that network that I have with female grapplers um and also I guess show the viewers that especially here in Japan you know there's not a lot of uh, tournaments just for just with females and so this is I think a huge deal um especially since one of our politicians you know who's in the olympic committee <laughs> i've heard i've made heard that statement and so uh i think it, it'd be a great platform for us to kind of show you know the viewers that okay you, 
women women can do this women are tough too like mm -hmm. yeah i guess i i i wasn't planning on asking that but uh, you brought it up i don't want to repeat what the former i think it was a former prime minister of japan one of the former prime ministers uh there's now on the olympic team or committee yes what he yes. said yes. You, anybody could go look it up and see what mm -hmm. he said but is that still an issue in terms of of women in japanese sports is there still something like i don't want mm. I don't, it's discriminate i don't want to say discrimination but or just like just this idea that that they still can't compete at a level that men can is that still is that something that's still prevalent in japanese society when it comes to yeah def yes it is it is it's uh, definitely treated differently i mean i think we're uh, a few years more than a few years behind the u.s when it comes to uh you know women rights i guess uh women are still paid a lot less than men there's uh men usually have more um flexibility in doing and you know a lot of things women are systematic yeah <laughs> my husband is uh, chiming in uh definitely it's systematic here where women are just treated differently and um, but it, it's changing. It's gradually changing, you know, um, slowly. Well, hopefully this, you know, you know, this is one step, you know, hopefully you'll add another step, you know, it takes a long time for stuff to change. Um, especially when you have people in positions of power, like that gentleman, when he's saying stuff, I don't even think he's gotten punched. I think he's still on the committee as far as I know. I yes. haven't heard about, so that's your right. Well, you. he stepped down, he stepped down as like the head of that committee. And then we thought that he would, um, you know, bring in a women to, to head spearhead that committee, but it's another gentleman. Okay. <laughs> so well, I guess if he, I guess, I guess, I guess you could kind of say like, you know, I don't know. It's a, at least it's a, a little bit of a step. It may not be a big step. At least you know yes, he's gone. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, before you go, uh, Kazuko, uh, I have a. Do you want to plug your? Sp uh, I don't know if you. Obviously, your team Fairtex is a team that's sponsoring your team, or I think is one of the sponsors for Quintet. Um, mm -hmm, do you have any mm -hmm. sponsors yourself, or anybody you want to give a shout out to, or any social media uh, that you want in case you want anybody to follow you on Instagram or anything? Uh, I want to give you an opportunity. The floor is yours. Uh, well, actually, I'd like to um, uh, mention that Imanari Jujutsu, uh, well, Imanari Masakazu has a YouTube channel, Imanari TV, and uh, we stream our practices every morning live, um, and he does show moves on them, uh, cool moves, so if anyone's interested, uh, check it out. How about yourself? Do you have any social media that, that you know anybody you want anybody to follow, fans to follow you, or is it, you want to give that out? It's up to you. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll leave it up to you. Oh uh, yeah, no, I'm 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 cool. If I'm sure through uh, through this quintet, my Instagram would come up. It's Kazalinda, but uh, yeah, if you want to follow, go ahead and follow. If not, no worries. Great, great, and for everybody. Uh, uh, you can catch uh, Kazuko Sakamoto uh, with Team Fairtex at the Quintet Fight Night 6 in Tokyo, March 12th. It'll be available on the UFC Fight Pass live. So I, I don't know the exact time what the trend, what the conversion is here. It might be a little bit late, but if it's too late for you, just watch it, get up, you know, go to work next day and, and catch it later. It's going to be fantastic. The first one with the, the women's team was one that was absolutely fantastic. Um, and I don't doubt this one will be, uh, because you got some great super fights. You got this great tournament with all with yourself and all these other accomplished grapplers. So yeah, check it out on USC fight pass, uh, when you get a chance. And, uh, so Kazuko, I really appreciate your time t talking to us. We wish you the best of luck in this tournament. We hope that you go far in your grappling career. You know, Hey, if you're the first, the only person that, that goes for everybody by all means, or if you just sit back and watch everybody else win, Hey, you know what, as long as you get to come ho home with that, uh, the quintet, uh, medal or whatever. Uh, yeah, you know, I guess you could say that's a, that, that, hey, you, you did what you did. You did what you did. You got, you still yep. won. Got it. Thank you so much, Andrew. Thank you for having me. No problem. Thank you very much.